everybody welcome back just wanted to kind of take maybe a quick video i have a very bad habit of making exceptionally long videos because i get too excited about the things that i'm talking about i think sometimes but today it's going to be uh, a, a rather interesting subject and if you can't tell well you already know just because the title is going to give it away but also all the hoses and stuff like that that are lying all over the place is also going to give it away so what is it that i'm talking about well as you can see here I've got a kind of a, a, a firefighting system. Um, it could be used for more than just firefighting. I, you know, we're back in the very back end of the property there. We're going to also have a vegetable garden that I'm going to be tilling and installing, and I'll have a video for that too. But um, in the meantime, this is going to serve to do firefighting in the event that we need to. So those of you that live like in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, like me, you are probably very well aware of the fact that right now where we have like exceptionally low dew points, I think it's the dew points. It's just like the dew point is actually negative in some areas. I mean, I, I'm guessing that means that the air is so dry it's actually suck, sucking moisture out of anything that has moisture in it, which is pretty crazy considering how dry that must be. And that coupled with, well, you can see the trees blowing you get uh, the trees blowing coupled with that really super dry wind. Luckily, things around here are still pretty green. Like whether well, you can see off maybe in the distance there, there's we got some uh, dry brush that's way, way in the back over there. That's not even on our property, but everything on our property is green. So I think that we're probably going to be in good shape just in the event that there's a spark somewhere that sets a fire off in the back there. But be that as it may, if there is a fire that's in the back there, I could be standing by waiting to see if it's going to try and spread on my property and i'll be able to protect my property with this because i have a huge reservoir just a giant reservoir that i've got back there and i also have over here i just got done uh putting this water storage tank in and i did not actually capture any video of it because i was just really wanting to get this knocked out and i had to go back and forth to home depot uh, a couple of times so I, I don't know i just i kind of like felt like this might not have been that interesting all i did really is like you guys remember me putting in the sump pump down here in the sump pump basin that you can see here where all the water that gets on our roof for the most part on this side anyways and on that side also because that downspout is tied in and comes into here that that sump pump was discharging just out into here right so right out here that's where it used to be what i did was i just dug up that line and put an elbow on it 90 90 uh, degree elbow and then tied it into the tank so you can see here where this is the inlet that's coming up here that goes into the tank it'll discharge into the tank then down below i have a hose bib that it's a reduction it's a two inch outlet that uh with a two inch to uh, well f first i got the um the ball valve that's down there so that way i can kind of shut the water on and off that's kind of important so uh, and then beyond the ball valve there's a, a bushing it's a two inch to three quarter inch uh, redu uh, reduction bushing and then on top of that uh, I just got a little bit of a uh, pipe sticking out and then on the very end there's a hose bib so I can you know put a, a garden hose on there and then also since I'm not gonna have any control over how much water is actually going inside the tank what I had to do because this tank did not have it but I had to actually add a um, uh, an outlet here also and this is a one and a quarter inch outlet which is unfortunate that's all I could find that would actually like allow me to, to, to add an additional outlet on this thing because I would have rather have stuck with two inch because I already had a bunch of two inch pipes. So I wound up having to do some like uh, just buying, uh, you know, two and a half inch uh, or I'm sorry, one and a quarter inch pipe uh, and then some elbows for that, some 90s also. And that just 90s off over here. And this is where I ran out. <laughs> I actually ran out of uh, I thought I had enough the one and a quarter inch which was kind of silly initially i was just thinking i was just going to just discharge the water out but since i finished my dry creek bed and i think i showed you guys some of the dry creek bed if i didn't well then here here it is i actually finished the dry creek bed there's two inlets that'll come from the opposite side of this fence there's one right here and then there's another one that's over there that, that was the original one i decided that after we had that massive amount of rain um a couple of weeks back and it still wound up coming in underneath the gate and around and into the pool it wasn't bad you know we actually were able to get the pool cleaned up pretty quickly but this time we're prepared that way we got two separate spots where that water could come in underneath so when this tank gets all the way full 
and the sump pump is going to continue to discharge like during super you know heavy downpours it's going to continue to discharge into the the tank and i you you could like let it pop up and, and run off the edge but it's you're really not supposed to do that you can see right here there's the maximum fill line i don't know exactly what happens if you go up and above that i know that there are some safety um valves that are up on the top there that'll pop up as soon as the water rises up too high those will pop up and it also lets the air out like you know as this gets filled it's gonna have a lot of air so that'll also let the air out but it'll also probably discharge water if it gets too high but i don't know why this is is marked here but i was like okay that's what they say so i'm i'm gonna remain below that so that's what this is for it's actually below the fill line and when it runs off it'll just run down to the pipe and as you can see it's gonna go right into the dry creek bed right there and I have at the very end of it, there's a one-way valve. So that way the water will go out, but nothing can come back in because I don't want to have like little mice or bugs or anything like that. They're going to try and crawl up inside of that tank. So that is the uh, tank that can also serve as a, uh, oh geez, and I just got mud all over my shoes. Uh, that's one of those things about living out here is that uh, this ground is just like, it's just saturated. Well, it's not saturated, but it's uh, just like, a lot of heavy clay and I got it all over my shoes all over Ugh. I mean, it's it, not that big of a deal except for the fact that you know I don't like tracking this around because it's just gonna get everything all muddy and dirty yeah you can see I'm just where <laughs> you can see the, the trail of where I've been so real quick I am just gonna blast my shoes off so that way I don't stop tracking a bunch of mud everywhere yeah, this is one of the big reasons why we actually poured one of the very first things that we did when we moved in this house. Because all this area that you see back here by the pool, that was all just like grassy stuff, just like you see down here. Where it's all kind of grassy, but mixed in with like a lot of dirt. And so when it would rain, it would just turn to mud. And I, I just don't know why, um, you know, the previous owners didn't. Because they, the previous owners are the ones that put this pool in. This house originally did not have a pool. So the, the uh, previous owners did put a pool in here. But um, I guess that they just... I don't know if they just didn't experience the same kind of problems that I did. With mud getting everywhere. Because I, I can't see how they couldn't. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just put in like a... You know... Pour, pour out this uh, patio that we wound up doing, but whatever, you know, this is just some of those things that you just kind of learn when you get a new property. You learn all those little idiosyncrasies and things that you might have to work around or alter in order for everything to just kind of work the way that you want it to. All right. My shoes are like Gore-Tex, so that's one of the, the nice things. Uh, Gore-Tex is that you can just spray them right off and you don't have to worry about your feet getting wet because it is impervious to water which is great I bought these a long time ago to go, go hiking with my friend Jerry and you know because I knew we were going to probably be crossing streams or maybe just you know yeah I had a feeling that we we're going to be crossing streams I don't, I don't mean like that in a Ghostbusters kind of way but um, they worked out really, really well. I, I was able to like cross over because we, we did wind up crossing a, a few streams and it really worked well. See, I told you this is going to be a short video, but here I am. It's not really that short anymore, is it? So where I'd left off was the fact that that storage tank, not only does it kind of double as like, you know, a way for me to, you know, irrigate the back of the property by just using rainwater instead of our, you know, tap water and getting charged. Which, I mean, honestly, the, the price for water out here is not too bad. But, you know, why not conserve it and reuse what runs off your roof and just onto the ground anyways? I'll be able to go ahead and use that for firefighting too. If, if that would be the first thing that I do, I, I want to hold off on using the pool until it's absolutely necessary. So let me go ahead and kind of go over what I have down here. Let me just flip this around so that way you can kind of see what it is that I'm talking about. So this is... A North Star, I think, is the name of the brand. All right, let me just, yes, that's a North Star pump. Uh, you can see the see it right on there. Got the North Star pump with a Honda motor. 
This came very highly recommended by those who were interested in this sort of application for, cause this is, this is really just a trash pump. All it's meant to do is just like, you know, if you want to discharge your, your pool real quickly, I, I, I don't know why, honestly, you would need that. Actually, no, I, I do take that back. Yes, you would, you would need to have, no, that's not true. Cause you could just technically get like, um, there's probably lines that they make for pools where you could just tie it into your, your inlet on your, on your pool pump. And then you just use the pool pump to discharge the water. But why not do both? I mean, if you really want to get it empty really quickly, you could fire up one of these things and use it as a trash pump to drain your pool while, you know, you got the other additional line at the bottom of the pool and you probably would be able to drain your pool fairly fast, I would imagine. So that's what I'm using it for though, is for firefighting for right now. And then later on down the road, I'll be able to, I got two hoses. Uh, you can see the blue one that came as a kit with the green inlet, the, the suction uh, inlet hose. And then the discharge um, side of things is the blue line there. And then I bought this additional white one, which is another additional, I think 50 feet or no, it's gotta be a hundred feet. I think the blue one is, a, is 50 feet. And I think that the white one is a hundred feet. So I've got a total of 150 feet plus, you know, the length of the suction line, which is really, really stiff. And it likes to curl up like you're seeing in there right now. So I don't think you're gonna be able to move this pump too far from the swimming pool, even though it's got, I want to say that line is 25 feet probably around 20 25 feet something like that maybe but again since the hose is so stiff you're not going to be able to to stretch that out very far at least not right now maybe if you leave it laying out in the sun and get some warm you might be able to get a little bit further with it so anyways this kit comes with a filter on the end of it there that you can see that's threaded on down there on the bottom of the pool that'll prevent like big material from entering inside your pump Technically speaking, this should be able to handle, you know, some debris, but like why push your luck if you're throwing this into a lake or something like that. But this is the great thing, right? So I have the, the, the giant water tank here and then I've got a whole swimming pool full of water. All this, you know, I can use to assist and, you know, putting out any fires that might be around. Um, especially, you know, I, I, I'm kind of like looking more, you know, further and further towards um, where we're at. And there's a cotter pin that fell out something i think it was one of these yep fell out of here i don't want the cam locks Let me just get that right back in oh it kind of bent a little bit that's why it fell out i'm not really sure why that bent that's weird i have to fix that yeah so north star with a honda engine on it came highly recommended i did my research looking online and as I mentioned, 100 feet of the white line, 50 feet of the blue line should be able to get me pretty dang far back. And when this thing is cranked up all the way, when you got it full throttle, this thing will throw water. Like it might be hard for you to tell, but right from where I'm standing, you can see that I've got a bird bath way the heck out there. It, it can, with the wind, the wind will carry it a little bit and it can hit that bird bath way the heck out there. So it's, it's pretty amazing how well this thing has worked. Yeah, so I've been kind of um, of a mindset for quite a while, if you're not aware, that you know you should be prepared for things and, and not have to rely, especially on like on a government to, to help you out. Because if there's a, a crisis that's large enough, there's only so many people in, in, in local governments that can help you out. Like if there is a, a, a very wide you know, wildfire that is heading towards our area, I, how are they gonna they're not gonna have there's not enough fire trucks in this whole area i don't think to be able to like put out like a really widespread fire so that's why you kind of have to be self-reliant especially like there there could be other things that happen who knows you know with with the way that things are going we could wind up with you know the grid going down and if the grid goes down the fire hydrant because we do have a fire hydrant that's pretty close i think if it's not right across from our house it's on kind of like on the corner out, out, out uh, side of the house here and during a grid down situation i'm i don't think that that's great i'm fairly certain there's pumps that are you know pushing the pressure up as high as it is in those uh hydrants somewhere i don't know where the heck it is but i'm fairly certain that that's how it gets the pressure i'm pretty sure it's not gravity that's you know putting that that kind of pressure in those uh hydrants so if the grid goes down you have no pressure at the pump or at the uh, hydrant 
what are you going to do? It doesn't matter if you just have a, you know, if you thought ahead of time to buy yourself uh, an actual like uh, hose that could be attached to a fire hydrant. Bear in mind, these hoses, I don't think they could stand a chance on a fire hydrant. So don't, don't even think about hooking one of these things up to a hydrant. I don't think that, you know, your average citizen is supposed to be tapping into a hydrant. Granted, during emergency cases where maybe the, you know, fire is not going to be able to show up and you're desperate, you know, that's probably a good time for you to take matters in your own hands as opposed to just watching, you know, your, your family or your friends' homes burn to the ground. You know, I, I will take getting a fine or whatever the heck it is if I, you know, if I can save my house, you know. So, but these are meant for this sort of a pump. Like these are, they're, I think they're rated for like 100 PSI. No, this one's 90 PSI. And what is this one? Does it even have the rating on the hose somewhere? I don't think it does. I don't think I see any print. Oh, wait, here we go towards the end here. Yes, and this is a 100 foot hose, says right on it. And it, let's see, does it say anything about, I don't see any like, there's nothing on it that says anything about max PSI or, which is kind of strange. But this hose, I'm actually gonna have to work on this one because I did try it out. The problem is that, this hose only came with one hose clamp for each end, which is not enough. It, it leaks. And I didn't even have that pump turned up full throttle. If I had this pump turned up full throttle, I don't know if those things would have, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if those just single hose clamps would have been able to hold back that kind of pressure. They probably would have popped right off. I would have wound up with a wild hose, which is no fun. Yeah, so that is kind of it in a nutshell. I'll go ahead and, and fire it up and demonstrate. One of the things um, I guess I could also show is, whoops, did I just press something? What did I do? I just pressed something on this freaking thing. Still says it's recording. I don't know what, what I pressed. What was it? It was just like taking a picture. I think that's what I just did. I accidentally pressed a button. Uh, so hopefully I didn't screw this video up, but we'll find out, I guess, when I go to edit it. So one of the nice things about this is that I kind of came up with like a mobile way to transport it. I have one of these big Sterilite containers. I don't remember how many gallon it is. It's, it's one of the big ones. I think it's just, oh wait, it says right on the side here. What does it say? This is a 27 gallon Sterilite container with the lid. And I can fit all this stuff, minus the pump, inside there, right? And uh, I do have this um, one gallon jug. And the one gallon jug it's for me to be able to uh, prime the pump because you do have to prime the pump first before you start it. I don't know. Do we have enough water in here? I would imagine there's probably still enough water. I haven't actually drained the pump. Nope. There's plenty of water in there, so I don't need to, to prime it. But that's where you prime the pump. I can roll up all these hoses and everything and it will all fit in here. So what I can do is I can take the pump itself put the pump down in the wheel barrel, then I take the tote with all the stuff in it, set it on top, and then I take my ratcheting strap, and you can see there's kind of an attachment point right there, that cross beam right there. So I take the, put the ratchet strap on that side, and then in the front there, you probably guessed, there's another one that's sitting right down in there. And I can just latch it onto that, and then just ratchet it down. I can wheel this thing out quickly. So it's, it's uh, something that I really felt strongly about with uh, being able to be mobile with it. Because otherwise trying to carry that thing by hand, it's pretty heavy. And then all this other stuff carrying it by hand, that's also the hoses and all that stuff. Even when they're completely empty, it's still kind of heavy. I would say that's probably about maybe 30 pounds or something like that. And the pump itself is probably maybe like 50-ish pounds. 50, anywhere from 50 to 60, 65 pounds. I don't really know like how much it weighs. You can look it up online if you want, or maybe I'll, maybe if I remember, I'll go ahead and just put that down in the comments. All right, so let me just go ahead and um, get this thing going so that way you can see it in action because this thing is pretty dang awesome. Uh, you know, I, I know it's a, it's a serious topic to be talking about with trying to like, you know, protect your, your family and, and potentially friends from fire. Um, and then also it's useful for, you know, irrigation if you want, but it's also fun. So let's, let's not kid ourselves. It's kind of fun to like blast that water all over the place. So let's go ahead and do that. And I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. And so one of the things you're going to want to make sure you do 
besides making sure your hat's not going to blow off, make sure that your nozzle is shut because otherwise it'll go all over the freaking place. All right. So turn that on. Set this to about a third. And it should just be able to pull and get started. So uh, that was the demonstration. And as you can see, this thing just absolutely blasts water an insanely long distance. And this is actually under pressure right now. So let's go ahead and get some of that off. One of the things I failed to, to talk about was the cam lock system. You know, you can put this, you can set this up any way that you want, but honestly, I would highly recommend that you get this cam lock system because it's like super convenient. It makes it really easy to tear things apart and set things up too. So I would, I would recommend these. Um, you just got these quick disconnects that come apart really, really quickly and inundate yourself with water in the process so that's that's why i think that it's really just a super good idea to get that cam lock because cam lock makes it so much easier to like set this thing up and tear it down like getting all the hoses off is just a breeze I mean, imagine trying to thread a giant two inch line. No thanks. That would just be annoying and take for freaking ever in order for you to get that thing threaded on. And then on top of that, you have to worry about leaks and all that other junk. These things have a nice rubber washer that's on the inside here. So when you, you, know, when you get that cam on there and clamp it down, it seats it really, really tight against the discharge inlet or I mean the intake suction intake and also in the uh, <laughs> this is gonna be filled with water and also for the discharge outlet so just makes it so much easier to take that stuff on and off so again highly highly recommend that you invest in these they're they're a little expensive 
But in the long run, especially like if you're in the uh, scenario where you're, you're trying to put out a fire, the last thing you want to do is have to worry about setting one of these things up and screwing all these things on and off. And meanwhile, that fire is getting closer and closer and that's just not good. Not good at all. So yeah, um, I'll have a link down below to all these. Bear in mind that if you get this 100 foot hose, make sure that you buy yourself a couple of extra hose clamps for it because one single hose clamp on each end, no, no, not good enough. You need to have like two, you might even need three. For me, I'm actually gonna put three on there just cause I wanna make doubly sure. Cause like I said, I don't want one of these popping off on me while I've got this thing under pressure cause that hose just go absolutely nuts. And if it's got, if it has like, it, for whatever reason, if it still leaves on those hose clamps when it busts off, and it probably would, those probably would slide back, I would imagine maybe. If those hose clamps are still on there when it breaks free, they're gonna swing around and there's a good chance it might hit you right in the face, bust you up really good, knock out your teeth. It's probably a reason why, you know, firefighters have those helmets with the masks and stuff like that on there, just so that way if they get hit by one of these things, which is actually probably a good idea. I think probably in the future when I'm using this thing, uh, if I crank it all the way up, because it has a throttle on it, on the, on, the, on the pump, you don't have to run it like at max level. If you, you can get away with using it at a lower pressure, it's probably going to put a lot less strain. It's definitely going to put a lot less strain on your hoses and everything else. Probably make them lot, last a lot longer and everything. So if you don't need to crank it all the way up, then there's just, you know, why, why bother? Anyways, I've, I've rambled on long enough. I think you get the, the picture here. Super efficient system. It's very, very powerful. And I, I feel a heck of a lot better knowing that I have options now, if there was, for whatever reason, a fire broke out and I needed to, you know, kind of handle things on my own. That this hose, I could get all the way, if I needed to, go all the way outside the house to the front of the house also. So that way, you know, options are just not limited really by anything at that point. You know, I'm, I'm able to pretty much get around my entire house. I could throw a hose up over my fence over there to get to that side. Yeah, I, and then I, like I said, with the pr more practical application and what I'll be using for most of the time, I would imagine, will be irrigating the back using, you know, the, the tank here. Cause we got, a, we got some storms that are coming up next week and I highly suspect we're gonna get a huge amount of water again, just dumping out of the sky. So that sump pump is gonna be busy filling up that that uh, reservoir there. And once that tank is full, I have 750 gallons worth of water to be able to irrigate with or potentially five fires. All right, I hope that you guys found this at least somewhat useful. And if so, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like this, then go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care, bye.